I'm back, y'all. I don't know how many takes I did on this, but I'm woman of the Bible, Michael. Michael. Her curves are a strong, a woman of strong emotions. She was unable to control the important circumstances of her life. Forcefully separated from two husbands, she lost her father and her brother, who were savaged by their enemies. That she, her sorrow, that she was ensnared into the drawn-out battle between Saul and David. Her joy, though short-lived, she enjoyed a passionate love for David. Her story, same one. Michael um, stressed herself across the window ledge, leaning out a far, leaning out as far as she did. She could see a man running through the night shadows, his moving swift and lift, like a young stage evaded its predator. Even if her father the king perused with an army, she was confident he would not catch her David. She had loved the shepherd boy since the day he had come, saw his trouble, so with his heart plan. After he defeated the hideous Goliath with only a sling and a stone, stone, all Israel fell in love with him. But it was for her alone that David had slain 200 men to prove his worth. He made a fit husband for a princess. She turned from the window gratefully for the chance to have aided her husband escape. Quickly, she dressed one of the household items placing it in their bed and topping it with a goat's hair to make it look like a sleeping David. She was ready for her father's men when a cane pounded on the door. David is ill, she told him. So they returned to King Saul, who immediately ordered them back, saying, Bring him up to me in his bed so that I, so that I may kill him. Discovering the ruse, Saul confronted his daughter. Why did you deceive me like this and send my enemies away? So that he could escape. Michael lowered her eyes and replied, He said to me, Let me get away. Why should I get, I get why should I kill you? She held her breath, certain her father would never swallow so bold a lie. Scene two, nine years or more had passed. Michael glanced out the window, arms folded tightly against her breast, observing the scene below. David, now the king, has entered Jerusalem. Leaping and dancing at the art of the covenant was carried into Jerusalem. He looked ridiculous. He looked ridiculous. The king entered Jerusalem. He looked ridiculous to Michael, more like a romping goat than a great king. David offered the sacrifice and blessed the people. That's the one that asked me, please, I get a snick of some chips to the mall when I get paid. Then he entered his own, no, some cookies in the um, snick house. To, I just want something sweet. House to bless it. But Saul's daughter met him with chips, cookies, and a snick. But until I get paid tomorrow, him with soulful, sorry, y'all, so, scornful eyes. How the king of Israel has distinguished himself today. This robing in the sight of the slave girl of his service, so as any vulgar fellow would. It was before the Lord who chose me, he replied, rather than your father or anyone from his house, when he appointed me ruler over the Lord's people, Israel. I will celebrate before the Lord. I will become even more undignified than this, and I will be humiliated in my own eyes. But by these slave girls you spoke of, I will be held in honor. From then on, silence spread like thickening ice between them. The queen entered her days alone, with neither children nor family to warm, warm her. Twice, Michael... Get out of that tub. Twice, Michael stood at windows observing David's. In the first thing, scripture paints her as David's wife, and the second, as Saul's daughter. In fact, her attitude is so changed that we feel perplexed, watching her as she watches David. To understand what may have shaped Michael's heart in the intervening years, we need to find a corridor connecting the two windows, a passageway that somehow led from love to scorn. Michael may have expected her separation from David to be a short one, her idealism forging a happy ending to their fairy tale love. Perhaps she believed David would find a way to protect her from her father's wrath 
Was she shocked when her real life intervened and her father punished her by marrying her to another man? Did her bitterness grow during David's long absence? Have you has she finally made peace with her new husband, only to be torn from him when David demanded her back after Saul's death? Did she question God's judgment, identifying more with the dead than the living after her father perished in a desperate battle with the enemies? Perhaps Micah bitterness swelled to raise when she realized she had always been someone else's pawn, a mere woman manipulated by powerful men. Her own father used her promise used her, promised her to David and hoped she would prove a snare to him. And finally, one of her brothers headed her back to David <clears throat> after Saul's death further legitimizing David's claim to the throne. A princess, then a queen, she was still a slave. Michael's story is tragic. Through all the difficult circumstances of her life, we see little evidence of a faith to substitute her. Instead, she is tossed back and forth, her heart left to draw its own bitter conclusions. In the last scene with David, we, we see a woman blind with scorn, making a very mistake God conscious the prophet Samuel against in his search for a king to see the wayward Saul. Do not consider his appearance or his height. The Lord does not look at the things man looked at. Man look at the outward appearance, but the Lord look at the heart. The truth is, God is the only one who can see into the depths of anyone's hearts, including Michael's. He knew everything that had happened, both good and bad. The story of Michael seems to indicate that she grew to be more like Saul than David. As such, she reminded us that even victims have choices. No matter how much we've been sinned against, we will still have the power to choose the attitude of our heart. If we cast ourselves on God's mercy, asking him to help us, he cannot refuse. Even in difficulty, he will drill in us, shaping our own wayward hearts into likeness of his own. And I will be back with the next woman of the Bible.